The American Speed Association was an American stock car racing series founded in 1968. Back then, it was practically a hobby to race in NASCAR, with very few full-time drivers and a lot of drivers actually working jobs throughout the week. With most races being in southern states, it was practically impossible for drivers anywhere else in the country to get into the sport. The ASA changed the game by primarily racing in the Midwest. It was a relatively big deal in the 90s and early 2000s, but for many reasons, it fell into obscurity and eventually collapsed in 2013. But they accomplished something even NASCAR wasn't able to do, race in Africa. Other than NASCAR's three-year stint in Japan, they had never left North America, so this was a huge feat. Anyways guys, right before the video starts, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. Also make sure you subscribe as we are getting super close to 50,000 subscribers. You guys are doing amazing, you guys have been crushing it, so appreciate that a lot. Anyways, let's get right into the video. A potential idea to revive the series in 2010 was to form the ASA Transcontinental Series to grow interest overseas since NASCAR was dominating the US market. But this ended up being the only race held. It was at the Pakisa Freeway in South Africa, racing 207 laps on the 1.5 mile oval configuration, which was designed essentially as a copy of the old low banked Las Vegas track. The road course configuration of Pakisa held a MotoGP race for six years. Several South African drivers were competing, the fastest of them being Yako Korea, a former V8 supercar and Super GT winner who started ninth. The pole sitter for the race was former NASCAR driver and Daytona 500 winner Jeff Bodine. Nationwide Series driver Mark Davis started second. Scott Wimmer's brother Chris started third. Then female driver Tony McRae started sixth whose father Rick McRae started further back. Tony was a West Coast late model driver, while her dad raced in NASCAR for 12 years. The cars ASA were using for the event were mostly Gen 4 NASCAR Cup Series cars. Anyways, let's get right into the race. About to get going, the inaugural ASA Transcontinental Free State 500. Glad to have you with us, and we're underway in Belcom in South Africa. Mark Davis jumped out to the lead into Turn 1 and had a pretty big lead after the first couple of laps. Then Jeff Bodine started catching Davis after a few more. Bodine was able to get under Davis in turn 4, and the pair battled side by side for a lap, but ultimately Bodine prevailed. Behind them, Chris Wimmer settled into third. Mark Davis actually tragically lost his father just several days before the race and carried a tribute on the hood of the car. During the commercial break, Bodine fell back to third while Davis took over the lead with Wimmer in second. Then Jeff Bodine made a pass back on Wimmer and charged after Davis. The next lap, Bodine was able to take back the lead. With a three car length lead, Bodine's starting to gather himself here again. And he had a great run off that corner and just going to blow him away down the backstretch. Battling for the lead down into three. Now Davis and Bodine started together on the front row, and they have fought it out so far here in the first couple of dozen laps at Pakisa Freeway. The top three seemed to be pretty even on pace through the first phase of the race. Annoyingly, during another fight for the lead, the TV direction cut to pit road. Somehow, Wimmer took the lead over Davis while Bodine was now defending from Tony McRae. Under everyone's radar, five-time NASCAR Midwest champion Steve Carlson snuck up to second among the chaos and lap traffic and even attacked Wimmer for the lead, but at the same time, the first caution came out on lap 22 for debris. The leaders came to the pits under caution. Wimmer started to overheat in the pit box, so he fell to the back. Mark Davis won the battle off pit road with Tony and Rick McRae in 4th and 5th. An interesting rule for the race was that you could only take tires or fuel during the stop, not both, so it really mixed up strategy. Some of the back markers stayed out, so Davis wasn't the leader on the restart. Gary Lewis was immediately swallowed up on the restart, but managed to get back to the lead just before the caution came out. Lewis down into turn one, but he's got some company down there. Here comes Mark Davis on the outside for the lead. Three and four wide on the backstretch. Meantime, here's Lewis in that white 73. He wants to go back at Davis for the top spot. Gary Lewis takes over again. It is rough on the bottom of that racetrack. He drove right through the bumps and right by him. And caution is out. Only one lap of green. Yellow flag waving again. Our first wreck of the day. Yako Korea in the 11 car gets into the wall. Unfortunately, Yako Korea lost it entering turn three and ended his day early. Korea, because we're on board here. 
Down into the corner, car gets a little bit loose. That's the danger zone. It gets free in the back end. He goes around, whack into the wall. Welcome to a super speedway. Yeah, really. Davis went back to pit road under caution, so George Lewis led the field to the restart. Davis had work to do after restarting outside the top 15, but was making his way up through the field quickly. Jeff Bodine had moved up to third and started to work on John Mickle for second and eventually got by him. George Lewis still led, but Bodine was closing. Just as the battle was heating up, the third caution of the day came out for Debris once again. Several cars stayed out and Jeff Bodine passed all of them before the first turn. On these guys so fast. Oh, we're already seeing a move at the bottom. Jeff Bodine going for the lead once again in the eight car. He's back in front and clean air. Tony McRae came out of the mess in second, while Mark Davis was closing on the top five for the first time since the first stint of the race. About five laps after the restart, Tony McRae was able to take the fight to Jeff Bodine and pass him on the outside. The race for the top spots finally settled down a little, but then the fourth caution of the day came out on lap 75. Now in trouble on lap 75, the caution will wave. Danny Correa, one of the local drivers from Belkham, has gone around, stalled it on the racetrack, part of a two-car spin over there. Take another look at what happened. Mark Ebert from the USA in that white 97 car went around as well. Nobody hit anything, and it looked like they hit each other. Danny Correa, another South African driver, wasn't able to get it refired after the spin. After a bad pit stop from Tony's team, Jeff Bodine and Mark Davis were the top two on the restart. Not much happened until the fifth caution of the day on lap 94, once again for debris. Bodine pitted under caution, handing Mark Davis the lead. Rick McRae was able to jump up to second, and then battled Mark Davis for the lead. After Davis was able to settle into the lead for a brief moment, the sixth caution of the day came out for Mark Ebers spinning. There in the white, oh, in trouble again! The 97 car goes around the Fizulu plant car. That car's been in trouble here before today. Caution out again on lap 105. Take another look at what happened. Gets up in the gray there. That's not a good place to be. Ebert was way up where he wasn't supposed to be. Picks up a little bit of that dust. You get that on your hot tires. There's no grip whatsoever. He's chasing it down the straightaway, trying to get it back under him. Finally loses it in the middle of the straightaway. Once again on the restart, it was Mark Davis versus Jeff Bodine. This time, Davis prevailed. Bodine was on his toe for several laps, and eventually Bodine took the lead from him. Let's take a step back and appreciate this competition. This was a dying series, and there had been about a dozen green flag passes for the lead. Pretty impressive. And add another one to the total. Just two laps later, Mark Davis took the lead again. About five laps later, a new name joined the fight for the lead. George Lewis took a look at the inside of Davis, but then Rick McRae made it three wide to get his lap back. It's fine, boys. Fight it out. I'll just sit here. McRae makes it three wide going down into one. I'm going to the lead lap, but oh. I'm going to get back to the lead lap. <laughs> Rick McRae takes that 0-8. The top three ran nose to tail for about five more laps without making a move for the lead. On lap 139, Mark Davis came to the pits for an unscheduled stop. On lap 145, the sixth caution of the day came out for, you guessed it, debris. Lewis made a late decision to pit while Jeff Bodine's crew looked under the hood for an oil leak. Sean Richardson led for the first time all day while Davis was trying to make up one of his laps. Jeff Bodine eventually found his way back up to the front. Then that 73 car starts getting going so we can see who's going to be the best at the end of the race. Jeff Bodine back to the point to the inside of Sean Richardson. On lap 167, the caution was out again, but Bodine didn't pit under caution as he felt good enough with his car. He smoked rest of the field on the restart again. Sean Richardson spun out in the middle of a pack of cars and luckily didn't take anyone else out. Driver who's had such a great day. Wow, it's almost like a tire went down or, or, or you're sliding in oil. Or, that car went around way too fast. Sometimes you get just a little bit too much rear brake. Jeff Bodine still led the way, followed by Rick McRae, John Mickle, and Tony McRae. The race restarted with about 25 to go, and Bodine looked unbeatable. Rick McRae settled into second on the restart, while there were battles everywhere else in the top five, even some three wide. However, things settled in the final laps. With five to go, it was Bodine, followed by Tony, then John Mickle. Just a lap later, Bodine ran into some trouble. The car as hard as she can, Wait a minute. but it's getting a little bit looser. Bodine in the eight car down in the corner thought he bobbled a little bit coming off turn four. He looks like he's off the pace, Scott. Well, that might be just a 
Bodine. He is dropped down. Jeff Bodine, who's dominated here today. He's led lots of laps. Could he be out of fuel? Could the motor have given up? Well, we watched this smoke all day long. His car's still rolling, but he may have lost a cylinder. There could be a lot of things. No, no he's definitely off the pace. Sweeps by in the 90. Here comes John Mickle. Bodine thought he could make it on fuel, but it was just a couple of laps short. Now Tony and Mikkel fought for first, with Tony prevailing. However, things heated up for the final lap. Stall from a lack of fuel, not much you can do. Now white flags in the air, here's Mikkel. John Mikkel to the inside of Tony McRae. This is for the race win here at Bakisa Freeway. Tony has not given up, she drove it by him on the outside. Go get it, girl! Tony McRae and John Mikkel door to door. Young woman from California, a veteran driver from Great Britain. Mickle to the inside, takes the lead back in three. They battled the entire last lap, but Mickle came out on top. An absolute heartbreak for Tony, who was trying to win her second ASA race. The race was an overwhelming success, drawing in a crowd of over 10,000 with such a diverse field. The top finishing South Africans were Johan Spies in fifth and Danny Correa in tenth. The race featured an outstanding 26 lead changes. The drivers were at a loss of words when asked about the event, with Jeff Bodine exclaiming his newfound love for the country and culture. The president of the track said he was ecstatic for the 2011 race, but it never happened. Why? Honestly, I couldn't find much of any information. Ultimately, I'm sure it just came down to the decline of the ASA. Their TV contract situation had been a mess since the 90s, and without the TV money, a series like this isn't very sustainable. Although teams and drivers had a great time in South Africa, the travel expenses were probably astronomical compared to a typical race at a local short track. Once again, all conjecture, but I'm sure the TV ratings weren't at all what they had hoped for, or the event simply just costed way too much money to put on. A struggling American racing organization trying to put on a whole new series across the globe while all of the teams and 75% of the drivers are still based in America. Yeah, not a very good business plan. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. This was an event I really didn't even know that happened until like three days ago. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. So make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.